It's a little happy hour. Yeah, yeah. Just to be in the house of God.
Lord. Yeah. Yeah. As we gather and ask you to come, I'm hoping that something has been said that will help yeah. us to remember the, God's plan and then know that that plan was healed in His Son Jesus who does the same. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here tonight yeah. to lift up Jesus. Yeah. Thank God for Pastor Wright and Sherman. Pastor McAfee and Reverend Smith and uh, certainly uh, Pastor Gavin as we thank God for him tonight. Amen. I want to thank God for the members of the paradise who have been here every night this week. Uh, our nurses have been here, the nurses have been on the door. And, uh, my wife was not able to come tonight. She's having some problem with the tooth. Uh, that has been pulled some time ago, but there was a piece of pieces somewhere working up out of the gown. But anyway, she's in pain. So we are praying for her tonight. Amen. Amen. But we come tonight that we might be able to lift Jesus. And we want to leave tonight rejoicing in Him. I want to thank the choir for coming tonight to share with us in this revival. Meeting. Amen. Somebody say amen, amen for the choir. Amen. They're going to come to us at this time in their, in their own way. I think if we uh, give it.
for the nights that I have been here. Amen. Yeah. I, I praise God that whenever I come, I want to give him my best. Yeah. I may not be at my best, but I want to give him what I have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I want to again thank Second Baptist and all of you for certainly for there with me for this week. I said to you when I got up on uh, Tuesday night that I wasn't Reverend Johnson. And certainly we're praying for him and for his family, the loss of his mother. Been there. So we understand that. So we're going to actually be careful with us tonight. Amen. We want to actually, if you would, at this turn to. Turn your Bibles to the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 6. 2 Kings, chapter number 6. And we're going to read the first seven verses. Second Kings chapter number six. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't tell me to hold on. All right. Everybody must be there. Well, here's some pages actually. Second Kings chapter six, beginning at verse number one, and the Psalms of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go. We pray thee unto Jordan, and take this every man a beam. And let's make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. One said, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was failing a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, All else, Master, for it was borrowed. The man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Maybe see it. I want tonight. To share with us from this incident here in Second King, as I as we get ready to close the meeting tonight, I want to talk about what uh, I would simply call the case of the missing axe head. All right. Some of y'all in here may be a little too young to even know what an axe is. Especially if you use them like I used to use them. Chopping mm -hmm. wood. Let's go. On the, on the yard and in the woods. But I want to talk a few minutes from this from the case of the missing axe head. Oh. I'd like to reopen this story because at this time, for a number of reasons, I want you to journey with me to the scene of an interesting incident. It happened as a part of a great adventure. It was not the whole story, but merely a thought within, within the story. Most times when we read that, I think the first thought upon our mind is about the action swimming piece of iron swimming from the bottom of the water to the top because the man of God threw in a stick. But I thought it would be befitting tonight if we would take a look at this and, and uh, why we're doing that because what I hope would happen is when 
this meeting is over that we will take a good look at ourselves. Huh? I thought of taking a look at the church. Since this is a revival, I think we ought to take a good look at our, ourselves. Because a revival will begin with us. It, it begins with, with us. I, I, I think we ought to look at that. We will never take possession of our neighborhoods. We will never get our children, our schools, uh, classrooms and all until we first take a look at us. I, I need to rewind now. If we're going to take a hold of the mind and the morals of our neighborhoods, it must begin with some of our neighbors. And so we are to have an effective revival and not just a few days of preaching. Uh, we must stand and see our own weaknesses. We have to discover our own shortcomings. It's got to be something wrong. Something wrong. It doesn't matter how angry we get when we get upset because when in public places people are saying some discovered says some mean things about the church. Huh? The church is often the topic of conversation in the barber shop, the beauty shop, the grocery store. And what people say about us is not always nice. And so we got to find out what has happened to the to the church. Hmm? One of the sad things is what they say about us, a lot of it is the truth. truth the truth does hurt. Amen. It'll set you free, but it does hurt. And so I thought it would be befitting to be helpful if we began, if we would look initially tonight uh, by talking about. Uh, initially, not about talking about saving sinners, but saving the unconverted religious. Yes, a lot of folk go to church uh, that are just religious. They have not yet really uh, been born again. Uh, I, I didn't expect to get a lot of amen from that one. But it does call for an examination of our sin. So we ought to stop tonight and assess our own problems. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. So what I'm discovering is uh, it would be good and be fitting to look at ourselves. We live in a world where people are, are so different, where everything is changing, but I have a problem. And my problem is things are changing, but God To assure us of that, he said, I'm the same today as I was yesterday, and tomorrow I, I will, will not change. And so that goes to show, to say today that if the church likes power, and if the church is coming up short, it's not because God has changed, we have changed. Churches are having more funerals than baptism. The people of the church have forgotten how to rejoice when someone comes and says, I was the lost, but now I'm found. And so we bring that light to Christ. We have forgotten how to rejoice. I said to them in the paradise a few times about how. Person used to come to Christ, the church would go to pieces. You couldn't stop folks from shouting. For the person would get up and confess and their sins and turn their lives over to Christ. That's a shouting move. I said, 
that's the shout and roar. So we've got to learn. We've got to learn if the trial meeting is dead. Sunday evening services, day. Come on, man. We've lost something. And if where you worship, if the church is empty, it is not that God has changed, we're changing. And it's needless to say that we lost something. We've lost our power. So that brings us to the topic of discussion tonight. Uh, I, I've lost something, and it seemed like what we've lost is the axe head. For you see, the axe head is the symbol of power. I need those of you who know what an axe head is, you know what I'm talking about, right? If, 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 uh, the axe head represents the cutting edge. And axe handles with no head are powerless. You can have all the axe handles you want, but if you don't have the head of the axe, you ain't going to quit no trees. Be the rule. Huh? The axe head, the axe handle without, the axe head is just a lot of, lot of motion. With no mind. It's a lot of movement, but we have no power. Yeah, yeah. Losing the axe head is a symbol of lost authority and lost authority. And when we evaluate the church as it is here in this 21st century, we have lost our authority in our neighborhoods. People no longer respect the church. Remember when mothers walked by, well, there was a lot of young people that they were on their knees gambling, if they were drinking, they would stop whatever they could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now they won't stop. They'll ask you to join them. Y'all come on and stay with me. I said, they go home and keep doing what they're doing. They will ask you to join them. You can get just as tired waving an axe hammer as you can the axe hammer in the head. We can get tired with a lot of motion alone. Are you praying with me? Yeah. Motion alone don't cut down trees. But if we're going to cut down any tree, if we must, the axe handle and the head, we must have both in order to be able to accomplish that purpose. Head of the motion alone will not cut down a lot of people. Uh, 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 I involved in, in the motion of the attending church. Meeting the meeting to plan how the next meeting goes. Go. Y'all know what I'm saying? They can meet in small accomplishments. So there's the serious case of the missing action as I, as I move on. I, I thought it would be wise to examine this, this situation as well, especially when I saw how when the axe head was lost, everything stopped. Yeah, yeah. At the loss of the axe head. Yeah. There was no movement, no, no motion, no cutting down of trees. Nothing was happening when the axe head fell into the wall. Yeah, yeah. And so it is when the power of the spirit is lost. Yeah. The spirit. And his power is absent from the church. When, when, the, when, when, when the 
leave at one o'clock, duh. Come on now. <laughs> Go to the shelter with dry eyes and leave with dry eyes. <laughs> and, uh, and that something is missing. Come on now. You, you may have, the handle you may have, clean Christian uniforms. And, 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 and beautiful robes. And, and you may have beautiful sanctuary to worship in. Grand instruments, strong, beside your melodies. But without the axe handling, without the axe head, you have movement and no mind. I'm convinced. I view the church as it is in this 20th century. I'm convinced we have all of the axe handling and no head. Somewhere, something we have lost. Preachers are more educated. People are more active in seeing and listening to the word, and yet very few folks are being saved. Yeah. Come on now, come on. Let me rewind. We we can think on the television, preaching all day, preaching all night. We come to churches on on Sundays and and sometimes twice on Sunday. Some churches are having three services. Yeah. And yet the world don't seem to be getting any better. Something is lost. Yeah. 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 I'm convinced that this is responsibility, but I'm, I'm convinced that the church has lost its authority and power because we, we decided to watch the fish that we have already caught. We want to be fishers in the aquarium. God said to his, when he called his disciple, he said, come after me and I will make you to become fishers of me. And there are churches who are excited when they get members out of somebody else's church.
It's interesting to note that all of the work involved around this one principle, power. Power. Talk about this tonight because I see it as a source of us getting to heaven. We need power. Christ said, and then when the Holy Ghost should come upon you, you shall receive power. And after receiving the power, you ought to become witnesses unto me. Starting in Jerusalem. And, 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 and symbolically and me, start at home. And then go out into the neighborhood and then on to the uttermost part of the world. We are responsible. Because you don't believe it. I read in Ezekiel. God was talking to Ezekiel and said, if you fail to wear mine and tell a man about his sin, try to show them the way. If that person died in their sin, their blood is on your hands. Yes, I don't want bloody hands. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got to stop waiting till we uh, 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 may occasionally run into certain people in our uh, daily tours and mission in the grocery store, wherever we may be in church time. We got to target some folks. Yes. You know that person that needs to come to Christ. You got to target him. So I'm going to talk to this brother. I'm going to talk to this brother until a sister, until he's going to even tell me he don't want to see him coming, or he's going to give up and give his life to Christ. But we give up too quick sometimes, don't we? Y'all come on and help me. I'm going to get you out of here as quickly as I can. We have all the symptoms of being great and and, and, and. But, but I'm here to tell you we have lost something. Some folk want to know that you got to go to church and be saved. You got to go to church as well. You can do a car have to go to the gas station to be called a car. No, it can be called the car set on the side of the road out of gas. Yeah, yeah. Simply because I show up at church every Sunday, if I have not really have a relationship with God, it does not make me a believer. Yeah, yeah. I can sit in my garage, but it won't make me a car. Y'all yeah, yeah. come on and help me for a Oh, yes, we had 
church today, and maybe that's the problem. We have a church, but the church don't have us. We can get emotional, we can just get all emotional and, and leave the church immediately and get outside and ready to say something terrible to somebody. Just got through shopping. Come on and help me here. I ain't talking about nobody here. I'm talking about how folks act somewhere else. I don't know. Huh? We lost our power. We lost our authority. We have all the handle, but the axe heads are gone. We lost the axe head. If we're going to have a revival, it must begin with us. If we're going to have a revival, it must start. If we're going to set others on fire, it means that we got to regain the fire that we have lost. Yeah, yeah. We're going to set the world on fire. We got to first reclaim our own fire. Oh, yeah. Just get mighty cold sometimes. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. I think sometimes we're afraid to just lift our hands and say yes to the Lord. I have means. Keep up on Lord the church for the first day sometimes. They ain't talking about nothing. They fight. <laughs> we get up in here, we ought to be rejoicing so much and so until somebody on the outside may want to come up in here and see what's going on. Hello. We lost. Have all the hands on the heads are gone. Lots of motion, no power. Noise, but no trees are falling. And when I say that, I'm really saying no souls are being saved. Huh? And upon reading the passage, we should discover something, something about this whole principle of law of power. The first thing here, you got to discover that you lost it. That's the first thing. And then, the next thing, you, you got to go to the right person to be able to reclaim it. And then find out how to reclaim it. And then reclaim it. So upon reading this passage, I saw something. I saw this strange situation where the son of the prophet had said to that senior instructor, Elisha, look now, the school where we are presently in jail too small. I'm looking at some brothers who wanted to be taught. Come on now. And they were looking for a place where they could get the senior leader of the prophets and teach them. And they said, we need a place. To them, go. Are y'all with me? One of them told Elisha, we cannot. We can't, we can't be satisfied unless go with us. Unless you go with us. I, I think that is in it, 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 it itself explained why so many of us have lost to ask it. To begin with, we have left the, the presence of God. Some might say Elisha wasn't God, I agree. No, but he was God earthly representative. Just like the man of God is God earthly substitute in this place. Are you with me? Of his son Jesus, he is that earthly substitute. And don't, don't take my word for it, but read it where Jesus told his disciple, occupy until I come again. Stand in my place. So Elisha was the representative power of God and now have of God and many of us want to remove the church to our own convenience. Oh, I was talking to someone the other day and just decided to start a church and everybody wants to start a church now. <laughs> but most of them don't want to be called churches. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. We want to throw out church, we want it to be 
be a ministry or something, you know. Just don't go to the church. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah. You're right, I'm a ministry. Well, that's okay. That's fine. But I, I love the word church. Called out ones. And so they had started the ministry, just started it. I, I, I don't know where the young man came from. So the person I'm talking to was saying, well, we started our service the first time when we started, we started our service at 3 o'clock. That's okay. She said, no, but that didn't work. So we had to move it to somewhere else. So when you, you started something for the Lord, you, you ought to be sure yeah. at least what time you're going to start. When we look at the picture of the church in the world now, and, and folks look at the church picture in the Bible, they are saying to her, you don't look like yourself. You don't look like the church that I saw in the New Testament church. Where people were coming together and breaking bread together and giving that everybody would have the same. We live in a world where we want to be exalted above one another.
Say, Max, I lost. 
You can't operate without the power. Jesus did not give his disciples the ultimate commission until they had received the power. Are y'all with me? He said, Act and you shall receive. And then you shall not.
need to go to God and tell Him, help me. 